Welcome to the Whiskey Jug, the only whiskey show on the internet that currently has two bottles of Armenac sitting under the table for later. My name is Josh, and today we are doing the last class review of the High West American Prairie Reserve Bourbon. Delicious. So, unlike a lot of other bourbons out there, um, when you're talking about just the plethora of what's available. This is a little bit of a unique product in that it's a blend of two different bourbons. The first one is an LDI bourbon, six years old, that is 75% corn, 20% rye, and 5% malted barley. The second one, and one of my favorites, is the 10 year Four, um, four Roses, which is 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% barley. So this is a very high rye blend of bourbons that we've got going on here. Um, something that's really cool about uh, High West is that, you know, they do call themselves a distillery and they have been making uh, vodka for a very long time. They're now making, distilling their own stuff. They have some uh, their silver whiskeys out there that are unaged, but for a long time, and what the thing they're known about is that blending of whiskey. And that's really where the craft for them comes into play is then, uh, Mr. Perkins' ability to really blend different bourbons together and come out with a really rich flavor. Things like this, the, the boar rye, the son of boar rye, the um, double rye. All of things are really good examples of campfire, another one. Uh, really good examples of him being able to really take two different products and blend their flavors together. And another thing that they're really good about is transparency. And since I've been on a bit of a tear of it about it lately, I just really want to commend High West as someone that, from day one, it just, on the bottle, it says right there, bottled by High West. Nothing about them uh, distilling it even uh, at all on here. So, and then if you go to their website to satisfy us whiskey geeks is, uh, who made it? Where, where the bourbons, the actual bourbons they blended together came from? And that's how I'm able to tell you that it's a, a six year and a 10 year and who made them is because they let they just make that information available. They don't have to print all that on the bottle because it and you know it'll mess with the story. I'm I'm fine with that. I mean this is a fantastic looking bottle, great little story on the back, and then on go on the website and you can find all the geeky information you care about. So kudos to these guys. Um, yeah, let's get straight into it. Now, like all the other uh, last class reviews, the original review you can find a link to in the description of the video below, or if you're watching this on the site, then it would be above you. Um, yeah, this is, the nose on this is really interesting. Um, reviewed this one a little over a year ago. Uh, I think it was like early um, October and it's changed a bit. Uh, the, the spice notes that were there, they're still there. The sweet notes, though, have kind of really disappeared on the nose. Over the last year, it's really, uh, it's really changed it, it, in a good way, though. Um, even though the sweet notes aren't nearly as uh, prevalent as they were before, they are. They've changed. They've become a little bit richer, more dark fruit, caramel, a little bit of like burnt sugar type of thing going on. Um, but it's mostly the wood the rye spice and uh, just the, the overall bourbon spice that's really moved up, especially the woody notes. It kind of smells like I would imagine like a 15 year four roses with that high rye spice and the wood notes coming through. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I just love this stuff. It, it is a great, great bourbon. Um, on the palate, Got a lot more of the same thing. A lot of that wood, a lot of that rice spice coming through, some caramel. Um, the cinnamon and pepper notes that came through on the nose and palate before have kind of take it, gone down a little bit. The spices got a little bit more ambiguous, like baking spices, you get little tiny hints of pepper, cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, stuff like that, but they're not very strong. It's more of a rice spice that's really built up. More of the, the wood has started to come through and really given it a little bit of that uh, darker, mustier uh, feel definitely some of the the dark fruit is coming in there like um, like uh, strawberry preserves uh, dark cherries things like that really really delicious on the finish 
kind of the same. More of the wood, more of the, the rice spice, more of the dark fruit. There's a little weird, there's a strange almost minty quality to it also coming through on the end. A little bit of a, a citrus pop, a little bit more of the caramel showing up, but definitely a lot more of that rye and wood really, really coming through. Really, really good. Now, originally, I had rated this an 88, and I'm going to keep it there. So, um, really, really good bourbon. Really, really delicious. Um, even though some of the things kind of changed place a little bit, the sweet went down a little bit, spice came up, the type of spice moved down, and overall, the, the quality of this is still right there in that high 80s. This is a definite, definite recommended buy. So gonna keep it there at the 88. Another really really cool thing about this whiskey is where the name comes from, the American Prairie Reserve. And before we wrap this up I just want to touch on that for a second. So the reason it's called the American Prairie Reserve is because 10% of every bottle that you purchase actually goes to the American Prairie Foundation. So in a way, by buying this, you're actually a bit of a philanthropist. You're giving back to the world by buying this whiskey. You're helping to build the largest American Prairie Reserve in the lower 48 United States. So, you know, cheers to philanthropy. And uh, the only way this could get really better is if it actually counted as a tax deduction. With that, I'm Josh. This is the Whiskey Jug. Cheers.